Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Space Engineers. Today, I've got quite an episode for you. I've been busy working on the sand battery we started on last episode, and have uh, finished it. You can uh, see it right here. Right here we have three uh, SAM launchers and one uh, SAM radar. I like the way the shape turned out. The way the axle, I guess you might call it, curves down. Kind of gives the launchers and the radar a uh, sort of futuristic APC look. I really, really like how that turned out. And between episodes, there was another patch, which also broke the radar mod again. Obviously, Keen wants me to fly to Prague and uh, stab them in the face. Which is pretty damned inconsiderate of them, considering how hard it is to get a good face stabber through airport security these days. But I have spent all the extra time I've had working on adding a bunch of bells and whistles to these little things. Much more than I was originally planning. So let's take a look at everything that's happened and everything that I've added. We went with these big beefy 5x5 wheels. Give it plenty of traction. As it is kind of heavy for a rover type vehicle. We also added a bit of a winter camo pattern, which I think turned out quite well. I really, really like how that looks. And of course, it slopes down here at the back towards a connector. Everyone needs a connector. In the middle here, we have six short-range hydrogen-powered missiles. Pretty similar to the ones that we looked at last episode. These have roughly a kilometer range. High acceleration, but fairly low range. I'll probably upload some atmospheric thruster-powered ones at some point in the near future, which would have a longer range. But we need to get some more resources before we spend them on that. Because we'll probably have to use the tiered atmospheric thrusters. But these are fairly cheap and effective for their range. They have really nice acceleration. This whole little middle section here surrounding the missiles is all heavy armor. Also, the axles going all the way up to the center are heavy armor too. Tell prevent you from snapping those off, though you still have the problem with the wheels popping off. We have a little cockpit, glass up here, and more glass underneath, so you can see down a little bit better than you can see up, which is kind of realistic for a rover type thing. In the back, we kind of have the engine area. This is where the battery is. There's an extra hydrogen tank back here. And we have these little vents right here. Okay. Take a look inside. Also, there's an antenna and a couple of programming blocks in here. Two batteries. But you'll see there's the air vent here. And even with this sealed, air can pass through these. So, if you're on a planet that has oxygen, you can pull in air that way. Let's take a look at the cockpit. We have this lovely little hatch here. It makes an awesome noise when you open it. And now we can hop inside here and look at all the wonderful stuff that's inside. Just turn off your jetpack and drop inside. Up front here I'm using a 
one of these azimuth open cockpits. You can use a, a regular just passenger seat. If you hop in, there's the control right here and you can control it with a remote control that is built in the middle. So if you don't want to use this azimuth little cockpit thing, you can perfectly, it's perfectly fine using one of the normal passenger chairs right there. There's room for it and everything. That's what I originally had here. I went back and forth between using the chair and using this. I ended up going with this because I figure I'm probably going to use this seat in future designs, so I might as well go ahead and download the mod. Up here we have the battery power. These two LCD screens are just there for symmetry. I thought about putting some stuff there, but you don't really see them very well. Now then, let's take a look at some of the things inside of here. Here we have one of the Colt consoles with a few buttons. A master switch. This just turns on all the timers, starts all the timers. If you run out of power or anything like that, it stops the timers. If there's a short overload period, it will start the time, stop the timers. So you'll need to restart them by clicking on that. We have toggle missile safety, which toggles a safety on all of the missiles. I'll look at that in a moment. Toggle the gear, pretty obvious. We have these little arms right here that come down and lock to the ground. If you look closely, you can see the gear is kind of just barely touching the ground. That's to keep you from sliding around. You can use the handbrake, but if you're on a steep slope, that may not be enough. So you have these. That just starts a timer so that the programs don't need to know the actual name of the gears and stuff. So you can go with different configurations. Just put it in the timer block and customize it that way. We have, of course, the transmit detected LCD screen or text screen right here. We talked about that last episode, so I'm not really going to go into it. Right here, we have the hydrogen tank level. There is a hydrogen tank in the rear if you rebuild some missiles and you want to refuel them, you can do it that way. Toggling the missile safety on will also toggle stockpile on the missiles themselves so that they'll pull hydrogen in from the tank. Over here, the last update did some weird things with some LCD screens, so you have to kind of scare them, boo, and get them to show. <clears throat> but right here we have the filtered radar data. Turn down the sensitivity of the mouse a little bit so that it doesn't make you dizzy. We have a number of programming blocks, as you probably noticed. Inside here, let's go ahead and close this so that we can get the nice little effect. Turn off our lights too. There we go. A really lovely ambiance, I guess, would be the correct word. As you can see, we have air conditioning. So even if you're in a planet that doesn't have oxygen or you're on a moon or something without oxygen, you're still going to be perfectly fine. There is an oxygen generator back next to the hydrogen tank, which can also be used to other produce more hydrogen or produce oxygen if you need it. Again, we have the vents in the back to help provide oxygen on oxygenated planets. The contact data we looked at right here is the targets we are, say, actively tracking. These are ones you can shoot at. And here, here is something pretty awesome. This is an easy menu. It's using the easy menu script, I should say. It wasn't all that easy to create. But it allows you to do all kinds of interesting things. Over here, we have this LCD screen here keeps tracks of the targets that we have shot at so that these get updated if you have more than 10 and you've already shot at somebody you want to make sure that that target is actively tracked by default these will only track the closest to 10 targets of the correct size 
Now then, for the menu, we have a manual fire. So we have the up, the down, the back, and the choose buttons. So you can go like that. Pretty easy. So manual fire will give us targets. And that's based on their entity ID right here, the IDs. Also, they're listed here, the IDs. And if any of these targets are shot at, it will have uh, engaged by it. If we manually do that, let's say we'll pick this guy. Come over here. I'll copy that. Whoops. There we go. So now if we click on manual fire, we'll see that that target says it's engaged. And again, the panels aren't updating correctly. Boo. Nope. Didn't work. Boo. No. Boo. There we go. See? They don't scare easily. Now, well, I'm going to leave that there to show you the next thing. Now, we'll go down. Toggle landing gear and toggle missile safety is the same, but let's look at reset first. So we can reset the radar panel, reset the target panel, or reset the engaged panel. So, reset the engaged panel, which just clears the panels. There's probably going to be some data here. These two should clear automatically if they need to, but otherwise, not a problem. Now then, missile safety does a couple of things. First, when it's on, it'll turn off that. It'll turn on the small connectors down here and lock them. When it's off, the reverse is true. You can see it turns off both sets of connectors and turns back on this programming block here, which is the launch script. This decides which missile to launch and sends it the targeting data and all that kind of stuff. It keeps track of the engaged. It does a whole bunch of different things. There are all kinds of scripts in this. I guess we'll start, yeah, we'll start from here. Look at the script. This is the communication script, the uh, block communication script from ARMS. I've modified this a fair amount so that it can work how we want it to. This is the translation script. It does, it checks this panel here and parses the data into the format the missile script uses, which is updating all these panels here. I mentioned last time we were going to use a regular expression for that. Those who are interested can find the regular expression right here. And those who don't know what a regular expression is can maybe learn a little bit by looking at that. I'm not going to go into it. If you want a tutorial on all the programs used here, you can ask for that in the comments and I'll do that as a separate episode. Right here we have the radar filter program which is pretty similar to what we looked at last episode so we're not going to go into that. Here is the menu program and again we've already looked at that, the launch program. There's also in the back there is the hydrogen and battery monitors. Those two program blocks. We've looked at those in past episodes too and we just straight up downloaded those. I have uploaded my hydrogen or my version of the hydrogen monitor script to the workshop so you can download that now. Now for something even cooler we're going to go look at the radar thing and this is pretty similar. It, uh, it's based on the same chassis. It has the same amount of heavy armor around the center here. It does have this additional laser antenna in case you want to relay the radar data to or fro, you can imagine if you're, you have a SAM site set up around a remote mining outpost, 
you would probably want to know that there's bad guys there before you close within the five kilometers of the regular antennas and they start shooting you in your poor defenseless mining ship. So you have this. You can always also use this to receive radar data from elsewhere if it's far away or you can link up multiple SAM sites and they can control each other. Or if you have the radar further away than five kilometers from the launchers, you can do it that way. You could, for instance, have some big giant missiles at your base and then have some early warning radars. Lots of stuff, lots of different stuff you could do with this. Jump in. So far, the front is fairly the same. Programming blocks, the two on the sides are the same. The one in the middle is not necessary anymore. There was a change, a patch, and it changed the requirement for that. Then back here, oh yeah, look at that. A very command and controlly. I was gonna put some seats here, some passenger seats, but you can't punch buttons from seats. So here is the menu for the launcher itself. Actually, this is supposed to be the same radar. So I guess I need to edit that. Whoops. Just a little bit of a typo there. There we are. So this is fairly similar to the last one, except for missile safety, it's just toggling on and off this block here, which again is a launch script. It's a different launch script than the one over there, obviously, but it also controls the launching of the missiles. So I named the block the same thing to make things similar. Now you'll notice that there are other radar panels. Boo. Boo. No. Boo. No. Boo. There we go. Now what's really cool is we can remote control these radar panels. Yes, I have set this up so that we can remote control things. It's a little bit sluggish, but we can say go up, wait a few seconds. Might take a second. The more SAM launchers we have, the bigger the delay. So you can see that. You can choose that. Again, sluggish. That's a limitation of the block communication strip. There's really not anything I can do about that. It runs as fast as I can make it run. But it is sending a lot of data back and forth. It's also updating all the menus. So you can see we can get the targeting. We can manually fire from the screen and all that kind of stuff. And we have each launcher here, all three of them. So one, two, and three is over there. Really, really cool. There's probably some ways I can speed this up a little bit. Maybe creating dummy menus and things like that and sending that information to it. Something I'll probably look at refining for future designs. I can see us using this a lot. We could also, for instance, have the radar itself relayed up to like our command center and then it give orders to the radar, which would then give orders to these guys. So you can imagine when we get fleets, we can control the fleets quite easily that way, with local menus being pretty quick, and the distance ones being a little bit slow. But I have a few ideas about how to, spin that, how to speed that up. This is more a proof of concept. Since we're not really going to be manually firing these, it is set up to engage automatically. And that is what we're going to look at here in just a moment. We will see this all in action. We have the radar script here, or not the radar script, but the radar panel as usual. Then here, down here is the engage targets panel, which is the same as the engage targets over there. It keeps tracks of which guy we've shot at. By default, we'll fire at one every minute that is it'll keep track of a guy every minute and if he's not dead a minute later it'll shoot another missile at it and also by default it will shoot i think every uh, three seconds so it'll fire a missile every three seconds 
looking at each new target. That is its maximum engagement range to allow the block communication script to work. The radar, SAM radar here, this block or this vehicle, sends all the information to the SAM launchers themselves and the launchers actually fire. So this little SAM radar is responsible for all the decision making and shooting the actual missiles. The launchers themselves just handle, okay, we'll shoot this guy. Now, is there anything else I want to talk about? I don't, I think so. Oh yeah, there is. This is the launcher list. It keeps track of how many launchers we have. And if we look at the private text, right here is the commands we're using to fire. So right here we have the grid name and the communication block name, and then followed by fire and colon. So our launchers are named SAM Launcher 1, SAM Launcher 2, and SAM Launcher 3. Just to quick show you how to set this up. Also, the menus are named the same as the grid. They are receiving the menu information for them. And if we look in their private text, these are the commands for the buttons. So send a SAM Launcher 1 that menu up is the command we're actually sending. We're sending it to this grid and this block on that grid. So SAM Launcher 1 for this menu, SAM Launcher 2, and SAM Launcher 3 for the other one. That's if you want to configure this yourself or use the code yourself. It's pretty kind of generic. I split things up in multiple programming blocks so that I could reuse the code. In future things, it would have been a little bit more efficient in terms of memory use and stuff to put it all in just one big script but for using it in future designs it's better to split it up i think so we're almost out of time we do have enough time to uh, launch a few missiles at some bad guys if we look over there there's a district headquarters which we're going to fly towards and trigger them attacking us we do have one more thing i forgot to mention and that's this little radar right here. This is the actual radar that we're using. You can see that it's spinning there. Click here, radar pistons. It'll extend quite high. Quite, quite high. We're using two of the modded long pistons from the piston pack. So that should get it over any kind of trees if you're in a heavily forested area. That way you can still see uh, radar contacts as this does require a line of sight. A little nifty thing I added for that. Of course, being that these are on pistons, you'll have to manually add them. But it's just, again, uh, two long pistons and a rotor on top. The rotor is optional, I believe. Nothing special there. Other than it looks cool. I guess that's kind of special. So let me uh, turn on the drones and then we will see this thing in action. Alright, we have multiple bogeys inbound. Let's jump in here and we'll turn off the missile safety. Get to a safe distance or a distance with a good view. And there you can see one launch, another launch, another launch, and see they are firing, cycling through the different SAM launchers each time it launches a missile. The missiles are going up, then they'll lock on, assuming they can achieve a lock, which is based again off the radar mod and then once they have achieved lock they're diving down for an attempted kill that looked like that one missed and he hit the ground tried to make it up but not quite then, after a minute has passed, we should see another volley. 
Just don't know how long it's been. I guess it's been long enough, because there goes another missile. And another missile. And that guy's right over our head. He's trying to land. Are you trying to squish us? Is that how you're going to kill us? That's not particularly fair, you know. I'm trying to see some stuff here. Where'd the rest of the missiles go? Okay, so they're trying to lock on and then diving back down again. So you can see this works, more or less. A little bit of trouble locking on to a fast moving target still. That's kind of a problem with the radar mod. It only updates the targeting data every 100 frames. There are some different radar mods you could use, such as a Blue G's radar script, which updates every frame, and that would allow you to achieve a better lock if you want to use that. And I may do a version with that. Ooh, somebody just got hit. Who got hit? Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. Right through their guts. Blew out his weapon. All kinds of goodies just spread all over the place. Lots of loot. A wonderful hit. Alright, that is going to be it for this episode. I'm going to upload these onto Steam. It may be a day or two before they get uploaded. As the ARMS mod has not updated its fix for patch 118. It's not up on Steam yet. The author is having trouble getting it uploaded on Steam. It's up on GitHub and that is where I've gotten it from. But I will upload these soon. And possibly I'll also upload this little demonstration world. So you can see how to set them up yourself. Next episode, we're going to be probably back into our survival world. And maybe do a little bit of scouting. Probably build us a sand battery or two. But that is it for this episode. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.